Recently, we have been spending time discussing heart health here on Daytime, and we've learned that a healthy diet, low in fat, exercise are two important ways to cut your risk of heart disease. But have you ever thought about the role that salt plays in your heart health risk? Our guest today is a cardiovascular surgeon from Springfield Regional Medical Center and the author of a book, Salt Kills, and it looks at the potentially deadly role that salt plays in our diet. And joining me today is Dr. Srandanani Naravetla, and he is here from Springfield. Doctor, nice to have you here. Thank you, Gail, for having me on the show. And I was telling you before we came on the air, I am a heart disease survivor. I had no idea how much of a risk that salt adds to not just people who already have heart disease, but as a prevention. You're absolutely right. As you just pointed out in the very beginning, for years we've been telling people, do exercise, don't smoke, and don't eat animal fats. Three main reasons why you get heart disease. But when I went to India to visit my folks recently, I found out just about everybody my age and older has heart disease and other problems just like we have here, except they don't smoke and they don't eat animal fats like we do here. And then I found out by digging through the research that salt is the largest and by far the most widely ignored and also the most easily preventable cause of health problems. And that's how I ended up writing the book to explain it. This is interesting in the fact that you think you're the first one who's really written a book about the fact that salt can be so deadly and that we really have been ignoring this for so long. Well, we know for a long time salt causes high blood pressure. Add salt to your food, you get high blood pressure. More salt you add, higher the blood pressure goes. But high blood pressure alone is not just a simple pesky problem. You can take one or two pills and forget about it. Uh, high blood pressure alone hurts millions of people by causing heart attacks, strokes, and kidney problems. That's just for starters. There's much more to it. What made you decide that this was an important book to write? Well, as I started digging, as I said earlier on, there is more to it than just high blood pressure. For example, salt has now earned the title, the enemy number one, the public enemy number one. The reason for that is it hurts you in so many different ways you never thought about. For example, osteoporosis. Millions of people are affected by broken bones caused by osteoporosis, and salt has a lot to do with it. Really? Yes, it does. Childhood asthma, for example. It's a very common problem in, in schools nowadays. In some ethnic groups, almost every other child has asthma, and salt has a lot to do with it. Obesity, you know, that's a big problem. Just wherever you go, almost every other uh, person in America is overweight. Once you're overweight, all other health problems become worse and salt has something to do with it. And more importantly, this will hit you hard. Memory loss and Alzheimer's. Really? It has become an epidemic in this country. And would you know that the Alzheimer's Society says if you have salt-induced high blood pressure, the risk goes up 600%, not 6%. So this is what you have to look forward to unless you quit adding salt right now. Well, I was reading the book and I was concentrating on the heart chapters because that's what I had. And I did notice that there were many other maladies that salt contributes to. But my question to you is it's not just about putting salt on our food. How do we as consumers know how to cut the salt in just the foods that we buy? Because there's sodium in everything is a preservative. Well, the short answer to your question, uh, Gail, is that there's no excuse to add salt anymore as a preservative. The commercial company is doing it to sell more product. That's my opinion. But you need to pick the, the choice with the lowest salt possible in the things that you want to buy. Uh, but you also need to know that 80% of the excess salt we consume actually comes from preserved foods hmm. and processed foods, not that you're just adding it on the table. Right. So you have to be a good consumer and read labels, right? Yes, you do have to be a good consumer and read labels. Um, the most interesting part about Salt Kills, besides the fact that it offers this new information, is that it's information for the, the everyday person. This is not a medical journal. This is for every, every folk. You're absolutely right, Gail. I want to just make one point here. Uh, we took the medical information from thousands of publications and simplified into eye-catching illustrations, easy-to-understand language, and simple analogies to explain how many different ways salt hurts you. I'll give you one example. Here is a, a, a graph to show you to focus you on prevention. This guy here is mopping the wet floor without turning off the leaky faucet. Now in this analogy, the, the, the mop is the pills that we take. Unless you turn off the leaky faucet, 
the cause of it, the preventable cause, like salt intake, you're never going to catch up. We want you to turn off this leaky faucet. <laughs> Don't just depend on the mop and take pills. Well, Doctor, we want folks to know that, yes, this book is available at Amazon.com, and they can find more information on the website that we have on the screen as well. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much.